You know, I want the American people to understand something, Sean. The commander-in-chief, and we only have one, is the President of the United States, and his name is Barack Obama. And these cockroaches organized, funded themselves, built a forceful military, started conquering uh, geographic areas all around the world under his nose. He ignored it. He did nothing about it. He didn't talk to the American people about it. As a matter of fact, he downplayed it. This is one of the worst military national security screw-ups in modern American history, and he's still screwing up. Has he rallied the American people? Has he spoken to Congress? Has he asked for a declaration of war or at least a joint resolution to fund an aggressive, offensive attack against these cockroaches? No, he hasn't. We're dealing with a very peculiar, petulant man who operates with a few advisors around him, a man who really needs as much counseling and expertise as he can get, given his very thin resume and experience record. And this is what's going on. And I'm going to tell you something else, because you've brought up a number of issues here. If this president thinks that by changing the word treaty to accord or treaty to deal, that he can violate Article 2, Section 2, Clause 2 of the United States Constitution, which involves the essential rights of the Union. That's what Governor Morris, delegate to the Constitutional Convention, said on September 8, 1787. This treaty process involves essential rights of the Union. Then this is number 1,200 example of a lawless imperial president. This treaty process, they debated at length. They said, no, they don't want the House of Representatives involved. They want the Senate involved. Do you know why? Because they wanted the states involved in issues of sovereignty involving America. Well, that was blown away with the 17th Amendment. But still, there has never been a debate, ever, that the Senate has the right under our Constitution, right, granted by you. the people, to ratify treaties. Agreed. And I agree they're bypassing. And I, I think they think they're being very clever. But this is not unusual. Work requirements for welfare have not been enforced. He didn't get his immigration bill. They didn't enforce immigration laws in the country. The same with health care. They make changes to health care. They don't go back to Congress. We have co-equal branches of, of government, separation of powers. He makes recess appointments, no recess. There are three issues on the table now where this president may dictate and not go to Congress. Airstrikes in Syria is one. Immigration and, and possibly even giving an amnesty to six, as many as six million people. And now this climate change issue. How should Republicans deal with this? Well, I don't know how these Republicans should deal with this. I've been arguing for a long time that the leadership is impotent and that we need more conservatives with courage to stand up to this president. So. But I do want to say this again to the American people. We're living increasingly in a post-constitutional period. This president is destroying the United States Congress with the help of his party, with the help of Harry Reid in the Senate, whether it's the filibuster rule, uh, whether it's treaties or what have you. We've never seen anything like this in, the, in, in American history. Even Franklin Roosevelt's vice president objected, the former Speaker of the House, when he tried to pack the Supreme Court. We do not have these ethical leading Democrats anymore who are standing up to this president. This president does not want to work with Congress. He does not want to rally the American people. He wants to go it alone. He's incapable of going it alone. He's doing enormous damage to this country. He's eviscerating what's left of the Constitution. And let me be very clear about this. He is attacking American sovereignty with this U.N. deal that they're talking about with the open borders and the, uh, the executive fiat that he's talking about. These are all efforts to destroy American Mark, sovereignty by Barack Obama. Look, you, I agree with your, and you wrote this in one of your books, it's a post-constitutional America, which is a pretty frightening thought. If you really stand back and, and listen to the things that you're saying, it's pretty frightening. And I think he's taken this further than anybody. I don't think there's any disagreement. I know the Republicans in the House are going forward with the lawsuit. There is the power of the purse. The one senator that tried to do something about health care using the power of the purse was Senator Ted Cruz. Isn't that the one thing, the one weapon that they can use where they have constitutional authority if, in fact, they want to combat some of these things the president's trying? It's a power if they use it. If they don't use it, it's just words on a piece of parchment. And the fact of the matter is, within weeks of becoming Speaker of the House, John Boehner surrendered it. When it came to that continuing resolution, 
He said he's not going to shut down the government. Great, don't shut it down, but do you have to announce it to your, to your adversary in the, on the other side of Pennsylvania Avenue? Government's been shut down 20 times. I don't see where it's done enormous damage, but that said, uh, you even have Paul Ryan coming out and saying it was a disaster, disaster. So what they've done is they have um, uh, surrendered their powers. Okay, impeachment we can't talk about. The power of the purse they're not going to exercise. What the hell's left? Yeah. I mean, if they're not going to act like Congress, then Congress is going to be destroyed. And let me be clear, Mr. Boehner and Mr. McConnell and the Republicans, he is destroying Congress. And the Senate has been eviscerated. And none of you guys have the guts to stand up and tell the American people over and over and over again who he is and what he's doing. All right. Well said. Mark Levin, thanks so much for being with us. And still ahead, Senator John McCain.